Well, what else can we do with our functions? We can perform operations on our functions, meaning I can add, subtract, multiply, and divide, which is what this graphic is telling you in the center of the page. And the way that we handle that is if I am going to take the sum of two functions, then I'm basically just taking each function and adding them together. Most of this is not that difficult. It's kind of intuitive to what you've probably seen before. The, the, the most difficult part comes whenever we have to talk about the domain of my um, new function. And it, is, it ends up being the intersection of my two original functions. And that'll be clearer hopefully in just a minute. I have three examples that I'm going to work separately because they can be kind of long. So in this first example, uh, we are going to find the sum of my functions and then we'll come back and do it again finding the quotient of my two functions. So notice that I have here two polynomial functions and when I want to uh, add the two functions together, so I'm going to talk about the sum, so f plus g of x, it really is just f of x plus g of x. Not a bad, not, not real hard because these are both polynomial functions. So I'm going to just simply take what uh, the, the function defined by f of x, which is 5 minus x squared, and I'm going to add that to my g of x function, which is x squared plus 4x minus 12. Now remember, if I'm adding two parentheses together, I don't really um, have to distribute a positive sign, right? I surrounded this function by parentheses because I want you to be aware that if you were actually subtracting in this case, then you would have to, in order to remove these parentheses, you have to distribute that sign. Don't forget that. But we're not doing that. So now I can just basically remove the parentheses and collect all of my like terms. So starting with the number 5, I can combine 5 minus 12 because they are alike and I get negative 7. Here I have minus x squared plus x squared and that just leaves me with a plus 4x. So when I add f of x to g of x, I get a brand new function, which is right here, and this function is negative 7 plus 4x, so we created a brand new function. Now what's the domain then of this function? The domain of this new function is really, it's the, um, the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. Well, the domain of f Remember, if I look up here, this function doesn't have uh, the variable x in the denominator or under a radical, so it is all real numbers. This function here, g of x, it again has no variable x in the denominator or under a radical, so or a square root, so it again is all real numbers. So if I combine or intersect an all real numbers with an all real numbers, I get just all real numbers. Now, what do we do when we want to find the quotient? Remember, the finding the quotient is just division. So f divided by g of x. And to handle that, we just uh, take the f of x divided by g of x. So my f of x function is 5 minus x squared. My g of x function is x squared plus 4x minus 12. And all I really did was write these two uh, polynomials as division or in, their, in a fraction like this. There's nothing to do past, past this, really. I can't do anything else with this. I can't simplify. In other words, if I could reduce this sort of fraction, I would want to reduce it to make it simpler, but I can't. There's nothing else I can do with this. So this right here is the new function f uh, divided by g. So what is the domain then of my new function? Well, the domain of my new function has a part that is in the denominator, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to look at the domain of the denominator for just a second. That is going to be x squared 
plus 4x minus 12, and I want to know what values cause the denominator to be equal to 0. In order to do that, I need to factor this. So this polynomial, or bi trinomial, factors into x plus 6, x minus 2 equals 0. So I know that when I set each of these two factors equal to 0, when x is negative 6 or positive 2, those are the values that are thrown out of my um, domain. Okay, so this is the domain of g, isn't it? This is the domain of g. Now we are looking for the domain of my, um, my composed function, or not composed, my, my new function, let's say, the domain of f over g is the intersection of, let me see if I can write it right, the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. Well, we only focused in the denominator in this case, mainly because the domain of the numerator, or the domain of f, is, which is right here, the domain of this is all real numbers, and we just found that the domain of g of x, when it's in the denominator, is going to be x cannot be equal to negative 6 or 2. So if you kind of if you find the intersection of that, it's just these numbers right here that are causing me the problem. In order to write that in my uh, expanded interval notation, we would have negative infinity to negative 6, then we would have negative 6 to 2, and then we would have 2 to infinity. And that's the domain of this function right here.